Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on thoseedsofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. So today we have Skylar Thompson, who's coming in from Dayton, Ohio. She's a voluntarist, anarchist, unschooling mother of a five-year-old daughter, three-year-old son, and a three-month-old son. Um, and she uh, has a few Facebook groups that she runs with uh, Benjamin Lucas um, called One is Strictly Voluntary, and then there's Unsocialized Autonomous Brats, awesome name, love it. Uh, and then there's Agorist Girl, uh, which is her page. So we're going to talk a little bit about, um, yeah, about you know how she came to volunteerism and anarchy, as well as uh, definitely peaceful parenting, because you know I love to you know focus on peaceful parenting since that's my real approach with my kids, and I think you know I'm around a lot of parents, and so you know that's kind of my angle, like homeschooling and unschooling. So um, yeah, so that's my my whole thing, you know, my uh, focus, I guess. And uh, and then you know we'll talk a little bit about that, and and you know what's the day to day, you know. Uh, problems that she encounters doing that and uh, you know how she solves it so um skylar thanks a lot for coming on the show hi yeah yeah so i i've been uh you know seeing you around with your pages and posting stuff and sharing you know uh, and liking some of my stuff and uh you know it's really awesome so i you know i love to interview peaceful parenting people and unschoolers and homeschoolers because i think so many people that i talk to about unschooling you know um say well, you know, the common questions, right? Like, what's a typical day, right? Um, you know, do you have a curriculum? Or w- what is your curriculum? What curriculum do you use? You know, the stuff like that. Um, do you get questions like that? Um, yeah, sometimes. I mean, my kids are still pretty young, but um, my daughter has just started telling people that she's homeschooled if they ask yeah, her. My, my, yeah, my son says that too. That's the question everybody has for my kids. Like, do you go to school yet? And right. My daughter finally, now she's like, we're homeschooled. <laughs> but she'll say we're homeschooled. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, she's just started saying that she's homeschooled. And people really, we've had, we haven't had any negative like comments about it people are usually like really excited about her being homeschooled so yeah i um yeah the, the, the i mean the angle that i do it usually is um you know like i don't like um you know talk about you know or say i'm an anarchist or you know say, or do anything like that but I, a lot of times i get these issues or these these concepts in like through the back door like stealthily um yeah you know i like uh you know, I just, I just, you, you just, talk, I just talk to people, and then you have them feel relaxed. You know, my thing is jokes. I, I'm a, you know, I try, you know, I used to do stand up comedy, so I tell a lot of jokes and I make people laugh, and then that lowers their barriers, makes them feel a little more comfortable, you know. And then, and then once I tell them, you know, I, I'm an acupuncturist, herbalist, and I say, oh, I'm a homeschooling father, and so they're interested. They, they don't feel th- threatened or intimidated by me, and so, which is great, right? That's what you yeah. want. Yeah. You know, so so that's uh, yeah, that's my thing, and and then after that, it's you know pretty smooth. It's just the the questions phase, you know, w- w- that we have to we have to uh, encounter. But um, but yeah, so before we get into that, um, you know, please get into your history and uh, you know how you learned about volunteerism and anarchy. Okay, yeah. Um, well, around 2011, when my daughter was born, um, I st- when she started eating food, I think was when I really started because I was looking for like what the healthiest thing is for her, and I was trying to find healthy options for her, and I kind of came into um, like this local um, co-op that we had because I got into um, getting raw milk, and so we had to go through a herd share because here in Ohio you have to own part of the cow, you have to own the cow in order to get milk from the cow, so there's all this like red tape that you have to go through, but, yeah. um, and then I started learning about Monsanto and all of that, that's involved with that, and we did a March Against Monsanto in 2011, and um, I think really what made me come to um, volunteerism and anarchism is just food in general, um, that was my start, um, there was at the co-op, the owners, the man who owns the co-op, he was really into Alex Jones and Infowars and stuff. So that was kind yeah. of like the beginning of um, my like journey to where I'm at today. And then once I started looking into um, just like Alex Jones and things of that nature, I was like, this is a little bit too, a little too much for me. So like if I could find like what this is kind of part of and then I found um, 
Justin Stout on Facebook mm. and he had his movement in Asheville. And that was kind of my start to learning about like peaceful parenting. And, um, so I found, uh, yeah, the, pretty much just Justin, Justin Stout and, um, his movement that he had going on in Asheville and I became friends with him. Um, and yeah, pre that was pretty much the start of it is food and food freedom and learning more about freedom and taking steps. It was just like a step-by-step -step process. Of any, any specific books or podcasts or, or YouTubers or personalities um, or anything like that? Dana Martin. I uh, like Dana Martin a lot. Yeah. yeah. Found her and I started because um, I, I didn't start out when I was a parent. I didn't start out as a peaceful parent. Um, I was just listening to like family around me telling me that like you know letting Bella my daughter cry it out was fine and um, things like that and it just didn't feel right you know it didn't feel right for me to like put her in a crib and leave her in a room to cry when like I felt like she needed me and so I was that I was searching for alternative options to what I was being told was okay to do because it just didn't feel it just didn't feel right what I was doing just because everybody else was doing it. And I've always been kind of rebellious and people telling me what I should do. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah, I went along a similar path because um, before we had kids, I remember talking to my wife and saying, you know, are we going to spank them? And uh, and we both looked at each other and like, yeah, I mean, we were spanked. Why, why not? Well, why wouldn't we? I mean, if they do something bad, you spank. But what's, what's the problem with that? You know, so we, right. we just didn't think about it. And it's more like, you know, my parents did it their parents did it so why wouldn't we do it right you know yeah. um and uh, and then you realize and it is, i was luckily i was introduced to uh stefan Molyneux video like the seven 17 reasons why you shouldn't spank your children and that yeah. was the first time i saw stefan Molyneux video and so that kind of got me introduced to peaceful parenting and the volunteerism and then all that you know, stuff free markets and uh and so yeah that was my my in uh, but also the, a similar thing with you is that I, I also was very interested in the nutrition aspect because I studied acupuncture and Chinese herbs and Eastern nutrition. So, yeah, so I, um, I did, you know, research heavily about vaccines, about GMOs, about, you know, holistic medicine, you know, all kinds of um, alternative therapies. Yeah. You know, I was very much into that in Monsanto and all that. Um, and so, yeah, that was, uh, that was my angle. And also the other thing that was kind of interesting was that a lot of the sites that I was following, they supported like banning GMOs, right? We should ban, yes. we should, you know, we should appeal to the government to ban GMOs. <laughs> and at the time it seems like a good idea, right? Like these are bad, yeah. right? It you didn't know? seem like a good idea at the time. <laughs> so, so you went through a similar thing. Yeah. Yeah, I well, yeah, I was holding signs and saying we need to ban GMOs. Oh wow, stuff. see, <laughs> I've since for I've since changed my stance on that drastically. But um, but yeah, I was a sign holder. I have like <laughs> pictures from walking around Dayton doing March Against Monsanto and. <laughs> so so so, yeah. so what's I your so 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 you know when somebody asks you about GMOs right now, like what's your approach if they say you know this is a horrible thing a scourge on humanity what do you think we should do about it what would you say to a person like that um well the well the stance i have now is just vote like vote you know vote with your dollar i mean if right. you if right. you think that monsanto shouldn't be a thing then don't spend your money on it and then it'll eventually hopefully it'll become obsolete and we won't need it and they won't people will like wake up and realize you know this is not good but um as far as banning everything i mean it's not going to do anything monsanto has so much money that it just it doesn't even matter so um but people want to say that they have the right to know what's in their food the right to you know a label saying that it has even the labeling i don't agree with labels being put on food to say that it should it's got gmos in it because i mean the only right you have is to grow your own food in your yard so if you want to talk about rights then yeah, yeah. On food, if you think you have the right to know what's in your food. So. Yeah, one thing I, I really um, have a, have come to realize, you know, studying Austrian economics and, and volunteerism is the idea of negative rights is that we don't have any positive rights like, you know, right to money, right to house, right to food, right to health care. None of that. We don't have any of that because yeah. all of that requires the labor of another person to give yeah. to you, right? And if you're saying that you have a right to someone's labor, then that is 
the essence of slavery. <laughs> that is slavery, right? And so that, that's impossible. You know, how can you have, how, how can you, you know, des- how can you have, you know, deserve the, ri- the, 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 the labor of someone else for free, right? It's completely ridiculous, <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, so the only rights that we truly have are those of, um, you know, negative rights not being, not being hindered to do what we want to do, you know, as long as it doesn't harm someone else, right? Um, exactly. or, the, or the right to homestead or, pe- you know, peacefully, um, you know, have your own private property and things like that. And like you said, grow your own food. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, that's one thing. And then the other thing is that I wrote an article um, like a couple months ago saying that um, uh, how banning GMOs strengthens the state. Mm-hmm. Right. Or banning anything, you know, just, just <laughs> giving, just like giving more power to the politicians saying like, you know, um, you know, if the corporations are the are the fiction of the state, it's the creation of the state, how is giving more power to the state <laughs> to restrict it? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I, I completely agree on that. And, and also the other way I look at it is like, you know, um, like like it's easy to look at all these corporations, you know, Chase and Bank of America and Wells Fargo and DuPont and Syngenta and Monsanto and BP and all these corporations that so many people revile. And it's true. They have done some evil things for, you know, for a lot of reasons. But you have to but they're not they're not the root. They're the symptom of the problem. Exactly. Exactly. You know, exactly. so it's like cutting off the branches of the tree. Right. You know, so it's like yeah. or, or, or cutting off. Uh, the head of the hydra you know it's just going to grow back right so you have to look what's what is giving them power what's giving them sovereign immunity and the corporate shield so that they can act recklessly destroy you know the lives of 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 millions of people you know destroy private property you know pollute oceans or whatever and not suffer consequences that a normal business would suffer right that that is a real problem yeah we got to strike at the root you gotta get the roots up. Exactly. <laughs> you get rid of it. <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. So, so uh, tell me a little bit more about your peaceful parenting um, style, or, or so, so, so right after when you when you got into volunteerism, is, is that when you got introduced to peaceful parenting around that same time? Um, pretty much. Yeah, I think my daughter was around eighteen months old when I really started grasping um, the concepts and like changing. Um, I. There was an incident that I had with her. She was 18 months old, and um, she had done something, and it upset me really, really bad. And um, I took—I I was not—I was not a peaceful parent with her up until she uh, up until I started trying with her around 18 months old. So um, there was an incident that we had where I was really upset with her, and um, I yelled at her, and I like I probably patted her on the butt a couple times and then um she got really emotionally distraught and she was standing at a baby gate and I was standing in the kitchen and she was just crying and screaming and then she started smacking her butt and she was like bad bad baby bad bad baby and then Mm. I it just it completely tore me apart I was like okay I was like I started crying. I grabbed her. I was hugging her and telling her I was sorry. So that was that was a really pivotal moment for me wow. was realizing what I was doing to her was making her feel that awful about herself. And so um, at that moment, I was like, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to try. It. And um, it was it was a struggle. It was a struggle for me for a long time because I was not I wasn't raised peacefully um, mm. in any manner whatsoever. Mm. So. Um, and it was like every single day, it's like I had to try more and I had to try better. I had to be better. And um, where I am now compared to where I was years ago is drastically different. So, and I'm still, I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I have my days where I'm just really just like, ah, but now I know that I should just, you know, go into the bathroom and shut the door if I'm, <laughs> if I'm having too hard of a time with it. So. I take myself out of the equation if I'm having too hard of a time with it. So right, yeah. I um, I remember uh, when my son was born in 2010, and uh, you know he's crying at night, and 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 I was thinking. I remember thinking like, let just just let him cry, you know, just let him cry, and eventually he's gonna <laughs> stop crying. But um, and I think I think we I just tried that one time, and I'm like, no, 
this is not the right way like yeah. like i could just <laughs> you could just feel that no no this is this is wrong somehow for some reason i don't know what you know but this is wrong <laughs> and uh yeah and, and and it's very um you know it's amazing because um yeah we're all we all grew up uh, in, in different ways but for the most part most of us did not grow up peacefully and the problem is that right. when when we try to improve our parenting techniques um, sometimes we get met with cr- harsh criticism from our own parents because if right. you if you don't parent like your parents then sometimes mm-hmm. they may take offense to that and yeah. say and say why why are you doing differently what did we do wrong <laughs> have, you, have you got have you, have you gotten that um not like i would say not really my mom um she like, I think I've only had really one conversation with her about it where it was, like, out in the air. I mean, a lot of stuff in our family, we don't talk about a lot of stuff. But um, there was once when I had said something and it really offended her. And um, she went into some cognitive dissonance about the way she treated me when I was younger. And um, it was really upsetting for me about at the time. It was about a year ago, actually. Um, and... She messaged me, and we had this Facebook messaging thing going on. But um, as far as her, like, talking to me about the way I parent my kids, no, she's never really – I've never really gotten anything from her that was um, indication that, you know, she was upset that I wasn't doing it the same way that she did. Um, She's always – she's – she respects me, I think, in what I try to do with my kids. So that's good. But, I mean, we've all grown a lot since I was – growing up so she's not she's not the same person that she was back then neither is my stepdad who also raised me with her so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know there's there's one uh you know i'm always battling with some people because you know i say well you know i don't tell my parents constantly you know you abuse me you you raised me wrong (laughs) you know you were violent with me um because there's no there's no end to that and there's no way for that to be um you know beneficial for anyone right it just engenders you know um bad emotions and yeah. so i'm like all right just just forget about it that was the past you can't change the past but now i can change my behavior i can i can improve so, upon it so that's what i'm focusing on you know forget about the past it already happened <laughs> um, yeah right yeah i feel yeah I, f- I feel the same way um and like i also feel like the only way that i'm gonna heal from what happened to me is just deal with it internally within me and she has like she pretty much has nothing to do with the way that i'm healing from everything that went on when i was younger so mm-hmm. i mean we've talked about it we've had the conversation it's done it's over with so yeah and then the same the same thing goes with um you know homeschooling or unschooling uh, uh, because i assume you went to government school as well yes i did yeah Public school, <laughs> kindergarten uh, graduation yes <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and the same thing. I get the same thing. You know, my my um, you know, they they know that they're not we're not going anywhere near there, and uh, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I constantly I'm always asking my son, my five year old, um, like w- w- if whenever we see a school bus, and you know, he recognizes if they recognize very fast because they see like you know in books and cartoons they see school buses yeah. and they know what it is, and and even you know it's funny my my three year old, she likes to joke that she goes to school like she likes to put on a backpack put, put books on and i'm like serena serena what are you doing she's like i'm going to school and i'm like and i say and i say serena are, are you really going to school and she's like no daddy i'm just joking <laughs> it's, it's, it's just cute. just for pretend <laughs> and, and, and i say seriously serena do you want to go to school no <laughs> okay good <laughs> oh, my, daughter's the opposite. my daughter she wants to go to school she's always talking about she's like really Mommy, She's like, Mommy, I really want to go to school. It looks so cool on really? TV Uh-oh. and in movies. I'm like, honey, no. <laughs> they don't show you they don't show you anything what it's like on T V and in movies and stuff. Okay, okay, th- th- this is what I tell my kids. I say because they did they asked me that question like what, what why do kids go on the school bus and like they go to school and what do they do at school all right this is what they do. They sit down, you gotta sit down, you gotta be quiet, you gotta write a lot of things, you gotta listen to the teacher, you gotta read a lot of things. And you can't go to the park, you can't go to the playground, you can't go to, you know, to museums, you can't go hiking, you can't... <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what Ben was telling her. Ben was like, Bella, if you go to school, you have to sit in a desk and be quiet and you can't do anything. You have to sit there all day. And Bella, you can, you can kind of see her. She's getting uncomfortable, like squirming, squirming around in her seat, like really thinking about it. Like, I don't want to do that. But yeah, we've been telling her, but... 
I thought maybe like a couple months ago, I was thinking maybe I should let her try it. But then I was like, no, because <laughs> no, that's not a good idea. Yeah, it's it's like uh, I mean they do try to make it look fun. I think, especially in the beginning, yeah. like in kindergarten, right? It's all about playtime yeah. and nap time, and it's just a lot of fun, <laughs> right? And then eventually, I guess, quickly in first grade, it becomes much more regimented and structured. Um, yeah. And and so yeah, you really have to um, you have to break that conditioning because yeah, it's true. In so many cartoons that that they watch for the kids, so much of it is uh, school propaganda. How fun it is, you know? It is so you know? terrible. <laughs> it's it's yeah. yeah it's really it's just really amazing and um and my kids yeah they know yeah they know they're, they're, they're homeschooled and they tell people that and um and and the other thing my kids are is um they don't they don't recognize authority which is awesome right. <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's awesome for me yeah. but not for my parents and my grandparents <laughs> they don't think it's necessarily yeah. <laughs> My daughter's the same way. She won't. My four, um, my four year old. She won't. She won't let anybody tell her what to do. If anybody tries to infringe on her rights that <laughs> she feels she has, it's over for them. Like she, she will. She will scream and kick until she has her, her what she feels is her rights right. back. So, yeah. Yeah, my uh, especially my daughter. She's she's a little tinier, I think, than most three year olds, and she's gonna be four in August. But but she definitely makes up for that in in voice, in like in like strength of yeah. voice or lungs, <laughs> and in just her her um, intense personality. Like she's not afraid to try to bite somebody or push bigger boys <laughs> or or just just when she's angry. Like oh my god, you got to be scared. And and so yeah. I'm not afraid of her. I'm not well. I'm not afraid for her for people in the future you know like some people are like oh no it's my daughter she's very gentle and sensitive no <laughs> that's not my daughter and and so and so yeah she's uh i i i'm i'm not i'm not like like um jeremy i don't know from the seeds of liberty uh he's got four-year-old twins and i was with him one time and, and he said you know i remember when when they hit i think one of them hit, hit the other one and then jeremy said um we only hit in self-defense that's what he said. Right. <laughs> which is a good, which is a good volunteerist concept. But the thing is, uh-huh. I, I think I don't need to emphasize. I don't think I need to emphasize to my daughter when to hit because she already like, <laughs> she already, <laughs> she's got that, she's got that part down, right? So I'm like, all right, don't <laughs> bite. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever, whenever my daughter and my son, whenever they get in a fight, we're always like, who started it? Like, what happened? We've got to figure out what happened so right. we can let them know, like, you had the right to do that, yeah. but you didn't have the right to do that back. But, like, they get into this thing where they'll, one will take something from the other, and then one of them will hit them, and then the other one will hit back into self-defense. And, like, yeah, yeah. sometimes we just sometimes we just let them figure it out. <laughs> but if they're getting, like, really crazy, we have to step in. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Usually we're, we're pretty hands-off, generally. Right. And, them figure it out but yeah yeah one thing i love to do is um if if they let's say they were in the car and they want to hear a song but they're conflicting as to which song they want to hear and so you know one one of them is going to end up crying right and so right. and so what i tell them is i'm not going to put on anything you two talk and and figure it out compromise <laughs> and decide and so and so you know my son turns to Serena, Serena I want to do this and Serena turns to Mark, Marcus I want to do this and then that's their comp- that's their that's their discussion <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny so, so yeah so I definitely try to encourage um, dialogue between them you know or or another thing I don't know if this is I don't know if you do this but I, I found this kind of to be, to be a pretty good technique is um, you know if if one of them does something that's really bad you know and, and makes the other one cry or they fall or something and, and they get hurt and they cry. Um, I I say if 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 the person, let's say Marcus hit Serena or made her fall or something or took something away and she's crying, and uh, and then and then I say okay now Serena if if there's something that Marcus really wants to do really really bad I say okay Serena can Marcus do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I give her the power to to determine when she feels better and allow him to have whatever he wants. I don't. I don't know. If that's a good strategy, um, but I found that to be pretty good because I'm not. I'm not the one solving the problem. She's solving the problem. You right. know. You know what I mean? Right. It's yeah. to me that that's sim- symbolic of of restitution. Like he has to yeah. make amends. He has to say I'm sorry. You know. He has to help her feel better so that she can say, "Okay, Marcus, you can do that now." 
Right. What, 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 do you, what do you think about that? Do you... um, that's that's definitely interesting. We had an incident the other yesterday where um, my son was playing on his little handheld Sega game, and um, Bella had asked him if she could do something on it. He told her no, so she pushed him, ah. and he fell into the window. He he like it it looked really bad from where I was sitting, and then. Um, Bella was like, she knew she had done something wrong, and I told her, I was like, why don't you go up your, I was like, go up to your room for a minute, I'll come up and talk to you in a second, and she ran up to her room, and I made sure that Jude was okay, and then I went up and talked to her, and I was like, we talked about it, we really talked it out, and I was like, you know, that really hurt him, and then she was like, but mommy, I just wanted to play the game, and he wouldn't let me play, and I was like, yeah, I know, that's really frustrating, but it's his game, it's his property, you can't. You can't hit him just because he's not giving you his property. And she was like, okay, mom. And then she basically was like, she had it in her, she, you could see the wheels were turning in her head. And she was like, well, what if I say sorry to him? You think he'll let me play his game? And I was like, you could try. <laughs> and so she came downstairs and she said sorry to him. And he was, he was so mad. He was like, uh-uh. <laughs> and she tried to give him a hug. And he was like, no, I don't want a hug. <laughs> and so I told her, I was like, you have to respect his body. If he doesn't want a hug, you can't hug him. But and then he was mad for a little bit, but then he let her play it after yeah, yeah. a while. <laughs> Actually, that, that reminds me of uh, when Serena is in a really, really nice, fun mood. She just like hugs and kisses people. And then when and Marcus, yeah. if Mar if she's doing that when Marcus is in a bad mood, he's like, "No, Serena, I don't want to kiss." And then, and, then, <laughs> and then she kisses him anyway. And then he gets really mad, and starts crying. And oh. then yeah, yeah. And then and then he's crying. He's like, "Serena just kissed me." <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I joke about that with my with my other homeschooling friends. I'm like, can you imagine a, a man, you know, complaining that woman kissed me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but 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 that was a learning experience for Serena because yeah. I, I had to then I had to give him the power, whatever she wanted. You know, can can Serena do yeah. this? Right? Because yeah. and, and the reason was, you know, I was explaining to her that yeah, like like you said, it's his body, right? Yeah. And if he doesn't want something. Right. Uh, then you can't, you know, you, you, you shouldn't do it, right? You got to respect the other person. <laughs> yeah. Usually my son, my son Jude, he's the one who's really lovey-dovey and he's very, <laughs> he's very kind-hearted and sensitive and um, I have to tell him all the time, like, you got you to back off. <laughs> like, not everybody, like, wants to be loved on like that, but especially with the baby, he'll, like, get up in the baby's face and, like, squish his cheeks and, like, try to kiss on him and everything right. it's so cute but yeah <laughs> awesome. him and my daughter they're pretty much polar opposites when it comes to everything she's the she's loud and very intense and very um everything that she feels she feels to the full throttle like <laughs> she's mad or upset or angry or happy even happy she's it's all full throttle <laughs> yeah but my son, he's really kind-hearted and gentle, and um, he's a little rambunctious sometimes. But generally, um, only if his sister gets him wound up, he's rambunctious. But they're yeah. pretty much polar opposites. Yeah, it sounds like my daughter is like when she's happy, you know, she's singing at the top of her lungs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like her lungs are really powerful for her age, for her age. But like, <laughs> like, yeah, you, you got to tell her, okay. Um, lower, <laughs> lower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so her, so her thing is, she has extremes, polar opposites. Like, she can be really, really loud or really, really soft. My son is like, uh, I don't know if you saw these SNL uh, skit with Will Farrell where he's, um, it's, it's called um, modul modulation disorder, where he can't. He, you, I don't know. Did you see that? Where he can't, he can't yeah. alter the tone of his voice. He's got completely yeah. monotone the whole. That's my son. <laughs> It's, so it's like you tell him to whisper. No, can't do it. <laughs> my son can't whisper either. That's so funny. If I ask him to whisper, it's like it's still the same volume. Right. I'm like, yeah, okay, I give up. <laughs> I just give up. <laughs> so, so, so tell me, uh, what what approach uh, with unschooling uh, and uh, so so do you tell people that you do homeschooling or you do or you, do you say unschooling? Um, I generally I gauge like. I like I prejudge people basically before I go and tell them that I unschool my kids. But right. um, if they seem like they're pretty natural minded, or um, if they seem like they're pretty laid back, or if they even if they even homeschool themselves, I will tell them that we unschool. But um, generally, it's just we. I just tell people that we homeschool, and then um, yeah, usually that's, that's radical. Um, that's radical enough, right? Most of the time. Yeah, 
Yeah, usually. But um, I usually, I haven't really gotten a lot of questions about it yet. Um, so, but we were at, we were, um, we went to get something to eat the other day and it was in the middle of the day. And um, that day they had done a statewide like tornado siren test mm -hmm. and the kids were asking what it was. And I was like, oh, look, this is the perfect opportunity. So we, I pulled up some videos on YouTube of tornadoes and I showed them what they were and then we did like a little educational video on what tornadoes are and explained the siren to them. We did like a, we went in the bathroom and tucked down because <laughs> uh, I wanted them to know like in case there was a tornado that's what we would be doing. Mm. Um, but we went, we went to lunch and one of the workers there had asked if, if they went to school and my daughter's like, no, we homeschooled and then my daughter was telling her all about what we learned today and <laughs> she, the lady that was working there, she, she seemed really interested in what we were doing but um, but yeah, we just take it on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't have anything planned out or anything, it just, just fly by the seat of our pants I guess. <laughs> we just take the day as it comes with everything. Yeah, yeah. I also, uh, I guess, gauge like like you said because homeschooling is a radical term for most people anyway. <laughs> yeah. A very yeah. small major minority will know what unschooling is, um, yeah. but but I basically describe unschooling, you know, by saying homeschooling. You know, I just say you know child child led learning or passion led learning or life led learning, and yeah. you know you just figure out what the child's interested in and you help promote that and you you help encourage them right. And and I say that uh, you know that's what learning is. Learning is voluntary. You know you can't force someone to learn, right? That's in, that's <laughs> called indoctrination when you do that, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, and so and so you know I say you know that's pretty much what it is. And and eventually, as after I talk to them and I get them a little more comfortable with the idea of homeschooling, um, oftentimes I like to send them the video. I don't know if you saw the video by Josie Wales, uh, Josie the Outlaw, uh, which oh. is which is um, a prison by any other name. Oh, I, 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 it sounds familiar. I've probably seen it. Oh, it's an, it's an awesome one. Basically comparing government schools with prisons and how oh. si how <laughs> similar they are in so yeah. many ways. You know, um, you know, yeah. the bell signifies movement, right? There's an authority. You know, the, there's an author uh, uh, um, how you say, um, a very clear authority and that you have to listen to or regurgitate information and obey orders and you, and you have yeah. a, a selected time where where you can have free you know play and then there's a <laughs> and then and then there's a there's a an overwhelming desire for for freedom <laughs> oh you got your cat back <laughs> my cat is trying to climb up the window apparently <laughs> freedom freedom <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too because he is an inside outside cat he can go come and go as he pleases oh okay I okay i don't know what he's doing <laughs> So yeah, so I, I um, yeah, I, I love I love to talk about it. And, and you know a, a lot of some people, the, I just mentioned the idea of homeschooling, and then some people who have gotten really comfortable with the already you know through talking to them, they say they already admit to me yeah you know there's a lot of problems with public school you know I don't even have to say anything a lot of people just admit that, <laughs> yeah. and and so and so and then the other thing is a lot of people that are homeschoolers around where I live. Um, a lot of them just don't like Common Core. Like that's the reason they homeschool because they don't like Common. Oh, right. you, you know? Yeah. And and that's not the reason that I do it <laughs> at all. <Yeah. laughs> it's, right. it's it's like telling people it's like telling people you're an anarchist and they're like yeah I don't like I don't like Obama either. <laughs> <laughs> so you, know? Funny. you know it's 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 a, it's a similar thing, right? Yeah. It's like the idea. It's like I'm not against Obama. I'm against the idea of a ruler, right? I'm not against right. Common Core. I'm against the idea of of um, institutionalized indoctrination masquerading right. as education. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah. So I think it's 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 clear. It's important to make that clear distinction with most people because um, you know a lot of people. You know, don't really realize the difference between indoctrination and learning. You know, I, I like I wrote an article entitled um, "Learning and Living Are Inseparable." Oh, that's good. Yeah, and, and it's so true. You know, you can't live without learning. You can't do right, it. Exactly. Like try to go one full day without learning anything, and you're 
it, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah, it's like it's like if you didn't learn within these twelve years, and then the three years or four years after that in college, then you have no hope in your life whatsoever to <laughs> to improve yourself, right? Right. <laughs> That's the approach, and and so and the other thing I say is that um, you know government schools are like uh, they're kind of like. Um, they try to predict the future, right? So it's like saying, you know, a child goes to kindergarten and first grade and they're saying, you need to learn all this stuff for the next, you know, 13 years. And this is what you're going to need to know in your life 13 years into the future. This is what you're going to need to know. And I'm like, how do you know what they're going to need to know in 13 years? <laughs> Who knows that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. It's so absurd. It's, it's so absurd. It just... I can't like I can't really remember like learning anything at school either. It's like I just when I think about being in school, I remember being bored. I remember just like wondering when the day was going to be over and I could go home. I just I I mean, I'm sure I learned something here and there, but the most the most of what I remember is just like the struggle of like mm. homework and getting good grades and then the parents disappointment when you get bad grades and Right. My mom always right. said, my mom always told me that I was smart and I like knew, like she knew I was smart, but like I hate, I hate pressure. I hate the pressure of, you know, you have to get to this, you have to do that. And so mm -hmm. I struggled really hard in school and my mom was so frustrated because she was like, you're so smart. You're like so, so smart, but you're not doing what you need to do. And <laughs> just, just always that struggle. When I was in school, it's, it's it's funny when you say smart because the people are equating smart <clears throat> with the ability to memorize and regurgitate information. Right. <laughs> and, 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 right. And, 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 and 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 like Larkin Rose said, um, you know, basically in order to in order to um, excel in in uh, you know a government school, you basically have to be like a, a a tape recorder, you know, and press record at the perfect time, and then and then when and then when the test comes, you're like, okay, play back, and then the teacher hears. The right answer. Okay, good. You get a high grade. You get a, a hundred, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I remember, oh, th that just reminded me. I remember um, around like fourth or fifth grade, we would have these multiplication table and they would time you. And so whoever got it done the fastest, like won like a piece of candy or something. <laughs> I, I would always, I would always just sit there. I would be like, <laughs> playing this stupid game <laughs> I would get some I would like do maybe like 10 of them and just yeah. be like this is so stupid I'd watch everybody I, I remember like sitting there and watching everybody like look at all these idiots <laughs> They're, like racing to get it done and it's like it didn't mean anything to me like right. it meant nothing to me back then but yeah yeah the and the most um valuable and, and interesting things that I learned were, of course, learned outside of school, right? Like I was, I got really into piano and I, and I, you know, I had teachers and I learned that outside of school. I was got really into chess and I read a lot of books outside of school yeah. and I was really into yeah. philosophy, Eastern Western philosophy outside of school, <laughs> Astron yeah. astronomy, you know, <laughs> theoretical physics, cosmology, you know, um, alter alternative medicine, all this stuff outside of school. Yeah. It, it was basically like, uh, the the day the time in the day that was completely wasted doing stuff that I hated and I would never pursue and so you know you it, the way I look at it is like it's like one giant broken window fallacy because because it's like if we didn't you know because because one thing that like uh, uh like my my parents often say to me is that you know how can you hate your schooling so much look where you are now you yeah. see you see you see what you've become <laughs> you're an acupuncturist you're nervous you know you're your your father, two kids, and you know, wonderful kids, and look what that's what public school gave to you. No. <laughs> and and my and my response is no. Actually, I was able to do all those stuff in spite of school. You know, right. I was able to overcome that hurdle of of wasted time and wasted potential. Like, what could I have done? What what could I have possibly achieved if all that time was not wasted and I could have studied what I actually wanted to study? What could it, where would I have been today? No, I, I you can't even tell. <laughs> right, right. And 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 the same and the same you know you can say the same thing about about government and taxation. You know they're like you know look at look at look at the roads and the bridges and 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 you know the Statue of Liberty and look at all these buildings. You know all, you know the White House isn't that wonderful? Look, we have all these buildings and towers and isn't that great? You know with all this tax money, you see. Um, 
and 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 my response is like, well, all that money was stolen from the people, <laughs> you know, at gunpoint. So what what novelties and inventions and you know where would the market be if the people's money was not stolen and they were able to spend it and invest it where they wanted to where could we have been today yeah exactly right exactly so it's it's one huge broken window fallacy and i think it's so important to to realize that that um you know that's what we do is you know we we focus on the child the individual Right. It's not about society. It's not about this is what's best for society. You know, um, you know, this is what we need for a civilized society. You know, you need to be you need to have a uh, a broad understanding of general knowledge to be an upstanding citizen. <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. <clears throat> and all this crap. So. So, yeah. So I, I really uh, I, I push back on that a lot. I've gotten to a lot of uh, heated arguments with my family members um, <laughs> on this stuff because. <laughs> You know, they, they, they take it as an insult, as a personal insult by me yeah. not, you know, choosing not to send them to school. Um, and, you know, we have cousins, uh, you know, a cousin that, 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 that's going to daycare and that's going to go to school. And, and, uh, and, you know, I have family members that work in the school system. And so, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> so it's an interesting... People always, get, people always get so offended if they work within the school system. They're like, I, that's the only people I've dealt with that have gotten personally offended if I say I'm homeschooling or something like that. They're like, well, what what makes you think that you can do better for them? And I'm just like, okay, I'm... I'm 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 a pretty non-confrontational person generally, so I try not to try not to get into it with people. If I if I if I read them and they're not receptive, then I pretty much wrap up that conversation quickly. But yeah, that's an that's an interesting argument too. You know, you're you know these people are they took their they have a master's in education, right? They're experts. That's why they should teach your kids, right? What do you right. what do you what do you have? You know, are, you know, are, are you um, are, are you licensed? Are you registered teacher? You know, what authority do you have to teach your kids anything? You know, and it's like right. it's like, do I need to be an iron chef to cook dinner for my kids, or <laughs> or, or do I do I need to be a NASCAR driver to drive them around <laughs> to where they right. need to go? Right. <laughs> right? What, do I have to be an expert in everything? Is that what you're saying? I can't be a parent without being an expert in everything? Like, <laughs> it's such a stupid argument, you know? If they want to learn piano and I can't teach them piano, I'm going to find them somebody to teach them piano. Like, what's the problem? I taught myself how to play piano, so if anybody ever tried to use that argument, I'd be like, <laughs> I'm just going to let them sit at the piano and figure it out or something because that's what I did. So Yeah, and so with me, I, you know, my passions, two of my great passions were were piano and chess, and I loved them so much. I practiced so much piano and I had so much chess. Went to chess tournaments and you know, and everything. And so I used to practice piano like um, in high school one hour before. I used to wake up like 4.30 in the morning, practice piano one hour in the morning, come back home from school two hours after school like every single day. And, yeah. and I loved it, right? And, and, so, and so people look at that and they say, oh, so they assume. They say, like, oh, okay, so you, I guess you're going to teach your kids piano and chess. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and and I say, you know what I say? Of course not. I mean, it it, it depends, right? If they're interested. Right. If they want know, to. Of yeah, course. That's exactly what I would say. If it's they're like, interested in it, I will. But I'm not going to make them do it. Like, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine my daughter, me making her sit down at a piano and play. <laughs> like, no. No. Like, not not formal teaching anyways. I mean, she'd sit at a piano and play by herself. But, um but no, like um, my mom even like she talks about when I was really little um, before I was like five years old. My grandma had a piano and she said I would sit at the piano and play like these little songs and stuff. And my grandma was in the kitchen one time and she thought that I was my aunt and my aunt had formal teaching playing. Wow. And I was like, under, I was under five and my grandma thought that I was actually I was my aunt playing the piano. Or really? Something. really? So, but, yes. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I remember just like, playing around when I was little on her piano. But. That's how it, that's how it always starts. That's how anything anything valuable that you do in your life it starts with just just basic interest, just curiosity, you know, playing around with stuff. That's how you learn. That's that's how things begin. That's how things that that are have value and worth begin. And and so basically the translation to that question 
which is um, you know so you're going to teach your kids piano and chess it is the translation is so you're going to force your kids to learn piano and chess <laughs> that's, that, right? Oh, right that's the translation right, right. They, they they make it a little bit nicer you're going to teach them no <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what I, so basically what I do is I just play piano like normal you know I practice on the weekends and I, and and they hear me a lot and and you know they're interested they hear and sometimes and actually my daughter the, the younger one the three-year-old she's actually more interested she sits down and she she bangs away a little bit so when she's banging away I I go over there and I sit down with her and I teach her some little things until she gets bored and gets up and w- walks away um, and also yeah. an, another thing is the chess you know I go to um some chess meetings at my local library like um, uh, every two weeks and out of my son and my daughter my daughter is more interested in the chess than my son the three year old you know can you imagine that <laughs> that's cool <laughs> like his his thing is more the iPads and the videos and stuff like that video games that's what he loves which is fine you know yeah. Um, but yeah so she's she's more into that and, uh, and and this is another interesting topic is, is video games because um, I, I, you said you mentioned your son with the Sega thing um, yeah. is that you know, doing the peaceful parenting, you know, you have to be comfortable with allowing your children uh, to pursue whatever it is they're interested in without without the parent, without us, the parents imposing our prejudice, our bias of that particular hobby or interest. Right. So if we don't like video games and they like video games, it's really hard to encourage that because you don't like video games yourself. You know what I mean? Right. (laughs) Right. Like, yeah. like, like every parent wants their kid to, to, to do, you know, let's say piano, chess, philosophy, or physics, or whatever. You know, you want your kid to be interested in that. But what if they're not interested in that? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so, my so, daughter, my daughter, she loves playing, like, makeup apps on the iPad. She'll, like, do makeover stuff. And <laughs> she's always wanting to put on makeup. She loves makeup. And she loves costumes and getting dressed up uh. and stuff like that. So I'm... She and I'm I'm not really I'm not really that big into makeup. I never really have been. I don't wear makeup on a regular basis or anything. So mm-hmm. it was interesting for me. Like at first I was like, Oh no, what if her her self image is thwarted because she wears makeup all the time and stuff like that? But no, I'm like, Okay, I gotta trust this process. I gotta trust her and like let her do her thing and um she she just loves it. I don't other than that, that's just her passion is makeup and animals. Makeup and animals is what she loves. So makeup, yeah. My my, my daughter is more into the singing and the dancing. She's into ballet. That's her. That's her like number one passionate thing that she loves yeah. is ballet. <laughs> she absolutely yeah. loves it. She performs for anybody, any any even like newcomers that come over our you know to visit. She performs. <laughs> she runs upstairs. She wants to get her tutu, and get dressed, and then come downstairs and perform. She loves it. <laughs> So yeah, like, my daughter, she loves to dance too, but um, she she doesn't really like being the center of attention with a lot of people. If it's one-on-one, uh, she would you do a little dance, but if there's a lot of people, that's not that's not her style. But, um, yeah. I, pu- I put her in a ballet class here in, t- in the town that we live in, and um, she went for five, like five or six weeks, and she really enjoyed it. But I had this one conversation with the um, lady that owned the place that made me, I was like, okay, we're never coming back here. But she said something about how my daughter never stops talking. And I was like, yeah, she pretty much never stops talking. And um, then she said something about, she made a snarky comment about how when she's in school, she's not going to be allowed to do that. And I was Ooh. like, well, it's a good thing. I was like, well, it's a good thing. She'll never have to go through that. And then I, I never took her back to, to the dance mm. classes there. So I'm going to have to find her somewhere else to go for that. But, um, yeah, yeah. But, I, I was just like, I can't believe that somebody would. I just, uh, I don't know. People have the audacity to say right. stuff like, that. yeah, yeah. yeah the, the dance place that we go to, my my daughter just absolutely loves it, and she's the one that's the most focused on what the teacher is saying, and and she's yeah. she's like <laughs> the most, um, you know, um, you know, dancing with her heart, you know, dancing her heart out, and and uh, and you know, because there's just a little screen where we can see what the kids are doing. And and most of the other girls are like you know distracted with something else. My daughter's like really focused <laughs> on what she's you know what the teacher's oh. doing. So it's amazing. And also the other thing is most of the three year olds and four year olds that go there um, only go once a week. And then my daughter loves it so so much 
that we, we were like, maybe we should go have her go twice a week. And she loves it twice a week. And then, and then the teacher was like, I don't, I don't have one student that goes twice a week. Your daughter is the only one that wants to go. And, and she loves it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's the true test of most um, uh, people doing peaceful parenting and unschooling is that is that what if your child likes to do something that you don't like? Right. That's the, that's the true test. Right. It, it, not that yeah. if they <laughs> if they like something that you like, that's easy, you know. But what if they like something that you don't like? Not not that you know nothing about, but that you actually do not like. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Ben. Ben doesn't really. Bella will ask Ben if he'll sit with her and do the makeup games, and he's just <laughs> like, "Yeah, I really don't want to do that right now." <laughs> it's so funny. Or sometimes, but sometimes he'll play like she has these Monster High. Have you seen those dolls? They're like no, no, no. They're like green and blue, and they have all this crazy makeup on. They're like Barbies, but they're kind of like goth, like wow. they're monsters. They're monsters. Okay. So, uh, but she has those, and she'll she'll drag Ben into playing with her sometimes. <laughs> it's so funny. But. So, so she doesn't play with the uh, what's his name Jude the the, the middle Jude? one. Oh, my son. Yeah, they play all the time. Yeah, they're always playing with each other. Or, or are they are they? But but does she do the makeup with him? Um. Yeah, he loves to wear makeup too. <laughs> like sometimes when she tries to put him on it, he's like, "Yeah, I'll do it." Like he's pretty go with the wind. He doesn't really mind. So. That's awesome. That, that that's the other thing that I don't really um I'm not really stressing about is like, you know, gender roles like, you know, boys wear this, boys do this and girls do this. You know? Yeah. Like <laughs> like like my my daughter, she loved, you know, she went through a period where she all she wanted to wear was tutus all the time, tutus. That doesn't matter if she was in <laughs> ballet class or not, everything was tutus. And then my son was like, you know, I want to try that and so, <laughs> and so he wore <laughs> I mean, awesome. I mean, I didn't I didn't say anything. He he wore it for a little bit and he's like, "Nah, it's not for me." <laughs> Yeah, my son did the same thing. He was like, well, that looks cool. Her, she had an Elsa dress from Frozen, and right. he wanted to wear it. And he wore it for maybe about two minutes, and he was like, nope, <laughs> and he took it off. <laughs> it was funny, though. I just let him do it. Yeah, it's about tolerance. And, and, and that's the thing is, like, it, it, you know, I've uh, I, the, the, when I describe how I parent, I, I say that um, I, I, I don't act like a... Um, an authority figure. I don't act like a superior, right? I act like an equal. I act like a friend, like a peer. And uh, and if anything, if, if any kind of power differential, I want to be um, like a like an advisor, you know, that right. they would come to for advice because they trust you, right? Because yeah. th- that they wouldn't want to hold secrets from you because they know that, you know, you'll be there to listen. You're not going to get angry at them. Um, yeah. And that's my goal, right? And so, and so it's so hard, you know, you know, going back to how we were parented, you know, with with a lot of emotions and anger and 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 corporal punishment, and, and it's so it's so easy to fall back into that. And I find myself doing that too. Like, you know, we're imperfect human beings, and you know, we get angry at things. And I just have to like remind myself to calm down, calm down. It's yeah. not, you know, it's not that important. So, right. Even if even if I get even if I make the mistake of like slipping back into old habits or something, and if we're like we're having a bad day or if I yell at them, I always like I always feel bad enough to where I'll apologize and I'm like, "Mommy, sorry, I'm having a rough day," or I'll just I'll I'll be I'll be honest with them. I'm just I'll tell them if I'm having a bad day or if I'm sorry that I, you know, sorry I yelled at you for that. I know that you were just trying to do like whatever they were doing and. Um, so I feel like it teaches them that we make mistakes and that they yeah. don't have to be perfect. So. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, like when we go over my my mother in law's house, uh, she she's um, Hungarian. She grew up in communist Romania, so very author oh. very authoritarian environment. And so, yeah. and so she one thing that she says uh, to us is uh, very frequently when we go over there is that you're the authority figure in the house. You tell them what to do. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, you're in control. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not that's not the way we parent you know right. um and 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 that bothers her it's like you know she's th- that's her mindset like somebody needs to be in control in this situation you know and and i mean sure like you know people people take it to the extreme like you're gonna let your kids run in the street no of course not <laughs> you know we're, we're, you know you don't you make sure they don't die okay that's the first thing about parenting you make sure they don't die okay <laughs> then the second yeah. thing is you know you have to be the way i look at it you know be as tolerant as possible allow them to be free and uh you know without restriction as much as possible within reason whatever you think that is within reason right and and so as little as possible 
I try to I, I don't I don't like to assert my authority at all. Like because you know as parents we are already bigger, stronger, and older, right? So we already have that authority. We don't need to assert it anymore. Like it's not necessary. It's overkill. Right. I feel like I feel like people that have to assert their authority don't like they don't actually have any. Like I don't. I don't know if that's true or not, but like I feel like the people I see who are like just like laying the hammer down, they're really not they're really not in any control at all. They're just, you know, just demanding and expecting really. Expectation is what it boils down their bet down to. They're just expecting too much from their kids if they're demanding and as a, as a being good- really a that's a, that's, a, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. That um, that like you know like the bully in school who likes to bully everybody around. Really, he has a deep insecurity in himself. Maybe he was beaten as a child or in, in his house or has a broken sh- household, or um, you know, or let's say like somebody's a homophobe and they they hate and they say they hate homo- you know homosexuals. They're probably homosexual right. themselves, <laughs> right? So right, it's it's really really adamant about. You know something that I'm. It usually it usually puts up a red flag for me where I'm like, okay, something's off right there, and I either choose to like leave it alone or sometimes I'll expand on it or try to get to the bottom of it in conversation. But yeah, well, um, excellent conversation. I don't want to keep it too long. Um, I see your child needs you, so uh, <laughs> so before we go, um, please uh, you know plug your your sites again. <clears throat> let people know where they can find you okay um we have a page called strictly voluntary and it's a good place for um voluntarists and my uh, boyfriend ben he posts a lot of good content on there about voluntarism and freedom and um then we have the unsocialized autonomous brats um uab we call it for short but it's our unschooling and peaceful parenting page um ben posts a lot of content on that um i usually if i post something on there it's usually like a personal story about our own family um and then i have agoras girl which i just vamped up a couple weeks ago and i'm really getting into um posting more on that page and it's all about agorism and um, the free market so Excellent, excellent. So, um, one thing I like to ask all my guests before we go is, um, what's your favorite quote of all time? Favorite quote. I I really like the uh, "Do no harm, but take no shit." That's my. I love that. that. Do no harm, but take no shit either. So, excellent. Excellent, excellent. I love it. (laughs) Basically, (laughs) basically, um, just I guess. yeah, yeah. Live, live in a, in a principled way, and right. uh, and and also, you know, the importance of self defense, right? <clears throat> that right. you know, exactly. it's it, it's like a, I think I think I saw I was checking out what's it, your website or one of your pages. I was checking out and it, there was a picture of uh, of guns and it says I I don't own assault weapons. I only own defense weapons. Oh, <laughs> that might, I don't. I maybe that might have been our page. I don't know. I, I saw That's that. Weird. I saw that. I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah. How? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, it's yeah, it's it's, it's just about self ownership, and I mean, the, the, right. the principles that we talk about with volunteers are very simple principles that yeah. that people don't seem to realize how profound they are and how you know they can really change your worldview. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I got into we got into it a few days ago with somebody on um, Facebook. I had posted something about Bernie, and somebody got really rustled about it. And I was like, "Look, man, I just want everybody to be free. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> like, I don't like." He was saying that we were holier than thou or something with our attitudes about freedom, and I'm like, "Well, I mean, we just want everybody to be free. I, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't understand why it's so hard." For people to understand, and it's like it's not like a club where we're not letting any but some certain people in. Like we just want you to be. We want people to be free to right. do what they want to do without the threat of coercion and violence. Like if you're gonna be if you're gonna be violent, then yeah, we don't want you in our little community. But um, we take that everybody takes that, you know individually and he's like he's like can't you understand in order to reach utopia we need to rob the rich that's the way to go 
<laughs> right. Just right. a little bit more taxes, and we will reach utopia. <laughs> yeah. Well, he he was he was going off the notion that um, people and humans are inherently violent. Right. So yeah. an anarchy, it would just be complete chaos. Right. And just that's just people's mind control, I guess. Yeah, it's all about fear. Well, it's down to it's, they're, they're and they're scared. They're just scared. It's just like yeah. once you once you can let go of the fear, then um, you can go really far in your life. Once yeah, you let go of the fear. exactly. It's like it's like it's, um, yeah, or parenting or anywhere in your life if you let go of that fear. Fear? Oh yeah, fear is paralyzing, and fear is the foundation of statism. It's the foundation of uh, nationalism and. And hatred of other, you know, nation, uh, yeah, countries, nationalities, ethnicities, religions, creeds, genders. You know, it's it's just amazing how paralyzing fear can be, and and um, and and statism just promotes that. You know, you know, we should tax them because they're robbing you. We should put impose these tariffs, build these walls. Right. <laughs> you know, separate, divide people. It's it, it, that's that's the whole idea. Um. And, 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 you know, the other thing is, is, you know, if we're all violent, like, <laughs> again, how can you put violent, if we're all violent, how are <laughs> put, putting some violent people in control of everybody <laughs> going to solve right. the problem? Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, it just falls on its face. But um, awesome conversation, uh, Skylar. Really appreciate it. Um, so if anybody wants to help me out, uh, you can do so through Bitcoin, PayPal, or Patreon. The links are below. Uh, it's patreon.com slash peaceful anarchism to help me out uh dollar show is fine or <laughs> dollar a month whatever you can afford whatever you think this show is worth to you um if if you feel you receive value from watching the show please donate um you know that's the only democracy i support is voting with your dollars i think that's the only uh moral democracy that we can support <laughs> without any coercion whatsoever right <clears throat> vote with your dollars if you want to see something more of in the world you patronize it so um awesome conversation skylar really appreciate it thank you very much so this thank is you. no problem so this is peaceful anarchism on the voluntary virtues network and the seeds of liberty.com and the conscious resistance.com wishing everyone have a wonderful day take care bye <laughs>